السلام عليكم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يهدي الله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا وقدوتنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ونور قلوبنا ورفع عيوننا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم قال سبحانه وتعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون Verily our praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank him we praise him we seek his forgiveness and we seek his guidance Whomsoever Allah Ta'ala leads astray, nothing can guide, and whomsoever Allah Ta'ala leads astray, or guide, nothing can lead astray. And we seek refuge from the negative consequences of our actions and the evil aspects of our souls, the lower dimensions. And we testify that there, there, there's no deity, no God, small g, nothing that deserves to be worshipped in truth except for our Creator, our Lord, our Fashioner, our Sustainer, our Maintainer, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, The one who created us from nothing, the one who will return to, who will fashion us back, back to our own fingertips. He'll fashion our fingertips, the smallest, smallest thing that's most unique to you. 
the only thing that's unique to you, too. And we testify that there's the final, the last prophet was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah to send his blessing upon the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. In the short amount of time we have, if as brothers and sisters, as people come in, if you can come forward and make space for those who might come a little later, and then come to the uh, your right side uh, of the facility, that way there can be room for people who enter without disturbing those who are already seated, inshallah. I want to talk about the Battle of Badr uh, and lead into the topic that I actually want to talk about, which is think about what you have and who you are and where you're at. And really be aware of where you're at and the time that we're in. You know, they all have times are tough, challenging in our time. And generically say these things. But we need to be uniquely aware of our realities and when we should understand what was said on the top tongue of Salat al Mastuq, on the Prophet, what he said 1440 years ago and plus, and think about where we're at. In the Battle of Badr, there's a lot of things you can take away. And keep in mind, we talk about Battle of Badr, Khandaq, right? these Uhud. Right? During the time of the Prophet, system, roughly, I think, about a little bit more than a thousand people which is such an inconsequential number of people who died in, in warfare. Specifically related even to the Abrahamic traditions, it pales in comparison, even in their own scriptures, where Musa says, kill thousands, right? Islam versus related to warfare by, are a fraction, and they're less than every other Abrahamic faith. But I do want to talk about the Battle of Badr, where the Muslims show their unwavering commitment to the Prophet and their love and their willing to sacrifice for him. And also that quantity didn't matter. It was the quality of the soul that mattered. So you have 313 believers with hardly any weaponry against an army of a thousand plus with all of the weaponry, all of the camels, all the horses, etc. So quality is what matters of faith and quality of your connection to the Prophet. The other thing, right before the battle, the Prophet asked them, and he was subtly indicating and making consultation, and somebody from the Muhajirun stood up. Ya Rasulullah said, may I speak? Al-Miqdal ibn Umar. He said, Ya Rasulullah, you direct us where to go and we'll end up there. Tell us what to do and we're with you. We will not say to you, like Bani Israel said to Musa, فَذْهَبْ أَنْتَ رَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَ نَحْنُ هَمُنَ قَائِلُونَ We will not say to you, like the people children of Bani Israel said to their prophet Musa, go, you and your Lord fight. We're standing right here and sitting down. He said, but rather, we will fight with you and your Lord, and we will be together. And the Prophet praised him and thanked him. I, we are not going to abandon you. We'll put our lives on the line. Like we said it in Medina, like we made Hijra twice, maybe once. We are putting our lives on the line, our greatest possession, for our faith in you. And we'll prove it today. And the Prophet also made an indication for consultation. And actually he was trying to get somebody from the Ansar to stand up and speak on behalf because the pledge of the Ansar was only to fight in Medina, in their homes, at their homes. It wasn't to leave and to fight and put their necks and their lives on the line. So he was trying to say, are you with us here at Badr? And then Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad stood up. And he said, Ya Rasul, what you take from us is more beloved than you leave with us. Tell us where to go and we'll go there. If you tell us to jump into the ocean, we'll do it. 
We will put our own intellectual, rational minds aside. We will literally do anything that you ask us to do. And we're not just fighting in our homes for our homes. We are putting our necks and our lives on the lines for you here. That was their love and their commitment to the process. And this is the battle of battle, where they're looking at somebody or an army three times their size with cavalry and weaponry. And this is also the 17th of Ramadan. They're fasting. They're physically not as strong as you might think they otherwise would be. And they're in the heat. And the Prophet son's daughter is on her deathbed. And that's why Uthman brother Lauren stayed back. So Muqayyah was on her deathbed. And she would pass away on the battle of Badr. And it was a loyalty that they went all the way out there, the Prophet seeing their true colors and asking them, would you fight next to me for God? So they're going through a spiritual test, a test of what their eyes see, what their hearts believe. And a subtle point, what started all this was that the Quraysh were using everything and exhausting all of the means to destroy Islam. And when the Prophet heard about the caravan from Sham led by Abu Sufyan, he was trying to take their goods, intercept them, and their wealth. So those things couldn't be used to harm God and his messenger. Which gives precedence, you might one would say, to BDS type movements that you try to avoid and you try to take away the weapon, the means to your own harm. But the one thing I want you to think about, this is the battle of Badr, this is the dua that the Prophet ﷺ made as he's looking at on top of a hill, top of a hill, short hillside, where he can oversee the infantry and he sees the polytheists coming and advancing and he, Abu Bakr ta'ala is right next to him. And he's standing there. And he begins to make dua. A specific dua. So, Allahumma, innaka intuhlik hadhil isaba. Oh God, if you cause this small group of believers to be destroyed, to be defeated, to perish, you will not be worshipped on the earth. If this group of believers is destroyed, is defeated, you will never be worshipped on earth. How does that tie them today? Think about that. Small group facing an onslaught and think about what's going around you today. What other faith tradition is holding fast to their tradition? The Church of England, who is led now, who will cancel and fire and terminate any bishop who says man, marriage is between man and woman and gender is A and B. The official church. Seattle, like, who else of the Abrahamic faith or any faith is holding fast and unwavering to their tradition. One of the most beautiful things, I love coming here because you walk through the dichotomy of realms. You go from that to this. <laughs> you came to success. You came for prayer. You came for a reminder. You came to hear the words of the Prophet You came to hear about God. Amidst the masses who are not in the same spiritual gift that you've received. One note about holding steadfast is there was a a sister, she's a prolific writer in the Bay Area. She went to Trader Joe's and she wears hijab and all. And the cashier said to her, You're, you know, master of religion. Yeah, I'm Muslim. Now, one thing I like about Trader Joe's hip Bay Area type person, 
right, postmodern liberalism. And she goes, he goes, one thing I like about your religion and you people is that you're the only ones not into this woke type culture, into these intellectual fads when Imam Zaid Shaq was here talking about it. You're the only ones who haven't sold out their faith for what's convenient. You have not abandoned, you have not sold for a thamen qalila, a small price, a little bit of peer pressure. People gave and were willing to give their lives for this faith so that you and I can say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah that we can hold the mushaf and know that that is the word of God and others have abandoned for a little bit of money May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq, providential success and tawfiq to have the ability to be steadfast in our faith because as the current, if you're in a river, anybody who's been in a river wading in it you cannot stand at the same level of strength as the current picks up flow. You'll start to move backwards. So if you think the way you did it, your level of assertiveness, your level of grounding, being firm, is the same that your children need to have, you need to think again. Because the flow and the current has picked up tremendously. And the onslaught, even just against religion and against God, has been drastically and exponentially increased for various agendas. And so us to say we could be the same as we were would be foolish. Right? We need to be even more assertive, more grounded, more firm, and double down in our positioning, in our non-negotiables of our faith. And that we can be beacons and not and flip the script, as I'll say. That we can be beacons of light and not be affected and worried about what's going around us but then beacons for people to be guided to, because that's what Siraj Munir Solar said. He was a light that attracted, and a small candle in the darkest room can light up and give you all that you need to see. Just to remind us, brothers, as people keep coming in, if you can, just get nice and tight when we stand up, there'll be more of them, inshallah. لتكونوا شهداء على الناس ويكون رسول عليكم شهيدا. سورة البقرة right in the middle of that verse of that uh, uh, the chapter the middle ayah uh, of that chapter talks about balance and like that we made you a balanced nation a middle grounded nation in order to be witnesses upon people and that the Prophet will be a witness upon you. Oh, you have attained faith. Be steadfast, be vanguards of truth for people. Shuhada. Sorry, Shuhada Allah. Witnesses for God. Witnesses for God. Even if it's against yourselves and those who are close to you. He would remember God in every state, in every minute, in every moment. Why am I mentioning those three things? And the last one, right. handful of verses and a hadith. Why? We are a blessed nation, but we are the last nation. They survived Badr. Here we are, but look around us. And if we are not people who remind others of God, who will? And the Apostle said, remember God in every instance. 
In the corporate space, God is almost disallowed. Yet they need all the solutions for God, meditation, micro breaks, etc., etc., yoga, all of these things without the actual answer, without the divine. And so as we move to a more and more agnostic, secular, confused society, us as a community need to be firm and strong and not malleable, at least on the critical things that are non-negotiable. That you are the best of people to come forth from mankind for people. Lin Nas, you're for people. But you have to be strong yourself. You can't be pushed away like the froth on the ocean, wherever the wind goes. You need to be spiritually grounded. You need to be spiritually connected to the Prophet Wasallam. And your level of sacrifice and commitment needs to be at a level right, that's commensurate with those who love the most, the Sahaba That is the price you need to be willing to pay in order to live here. Because you cannot complain as the challenges and problems come and we have a problem now that it's Fajr at 5 o'clock in the morning and we're struggling to get it on time. We need to be grounded spiritually and we need to have courage to voice our beliefs regardless of what's trendy. May Allah Ta'ala give us the courage, the strength, the providential success and the protection and give us this this brotherhood and this sisterhood to look after each other. It'll be hard, I promise you, without each other. But if all of us are saying the same thing, that we're not down with this, it's a lot easier to stand up together. But if you're the only one there, it's going to be much more difficult. So we need to be bonded together. And we need to hold fast to our tradition from the Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is pure, he was pure, the tradition is pure, and it's the only thing that's keeping God worshipped. It is the only thing in purity that is keeping the one true God being worshipped and being remembered today. And if we fail here, we're going to end up looking like places in other countries where Muslims landed and they despondent. So we have an obligation only, not only to ourselves, certainly to our generations and our lineage, but also to our communities, that we don't assimilate and look like everybody else, and that we don't jump on these trends, right, that are trendy and tomorrow's gonna be something different, that we hold fast to our belief, that we prize and cherish our Iman. And may Allah Ta'ala give us the utmost courage and the true sweetness of faith and the grounding, the true grounding and the wisdom, this lesson, the wisdom to understand what surrounds us and what surrounds our children. And for those who don't have children and children, when you do, you realize, you realize the focus, energy, and effort, and time, and concern, especially the mothers who put into the spiritual care of their children. Because I can't imagine anything worse than seeing my own offspring, my own blood, not dying on faith. And when you look at it that way, you realize what the most important thing is in life. is you and your family and your loved ones dying with La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. But it takes work. And that work needed to start yesterday. In
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Uh, so first announcement, uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, 